Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to be talking about schemas and models for Mongoose to connect to our MongoDB database. This video is sponsored by Filestack, so if you want to support this channel, check out the link down below. This is a fabulous API for working with images and files in your applications. It's a complete upload service with tons of features. So drag and drop capabilities, uploading from cloud providers, a very high success rate, good user interfaces, and more. So check them out, link down below. To begin, I wanted to explain that you can do things inside of the single app.js file, but as your code continues to grow in size, it's going to get a little unwieldy. So what I would recommend is actually creating a new folder for all of your models. The models are going to describe your different data structures that you're going to want to store in your database. So within our project, we're just going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this models. And inside of here, we can store all of our different model files so they're nice and easy to find. To begin, let's go ahead and add a new file. And this is going to be called customer.js. Now we can kind of isolate the mongoose functionality for this model so it's not polluting our main app.js file. So the very first thing is we're going to use mongoose so we'll say mongoose and require mongoose. Now you might be wondering if we're defining this in a separate javascript file how can we kind of combine all of these and run them at the same time? Well all we have to do is over in app.js we just require our new customer file that we created. So for example, after these other requirements, we can say const and we'll just call this customer with uh, a capital C here, which is just a convention to basically say, hey, this is how we are going to instantiate customers. If you have a lowercase c, it tends to describe a, an individual customer. So I like to use an uppercase customer there. You may also see this like customer model, but I'm just going to keep it customer with a capital C and then require and then inside of quotes we can actually just use a path so model slash customers so this dot slash means the same directory and then the models directory and then the customers file so now this code is available inside of app.js so the code is still empty though so we need to go back to the customer.js file and start defining our model the way you define a model is actually by creating a schema. So the schema actually describes the structure and this is how you would define it. So customer schema is a new mongoose.schema and I'm actually going to define this with const. Now inside of the parentheses you will create an object and give it various properties. The properties are going to basically be the columns, you can think of them as, the different attributes that you want for a customer. This is just describing the customer structure. So we'll have a name, which will be of type string, and we will have an industry, which will be of type string. We're just gonna keep it very basic for this example. Now to actually make this a model, which is basically an association from this structure here to an actual collection in MongoDB, you will say mongoose.model and pass in first the collection name, which is going to be customer, and then the schema that we just created. And this may seem strange at first, but after you do this a few times, it'll just become habit. The only other thing is on the left we're going to say module.exports. This describes what things we're going to export from this file for when we import them or require them in other files such as app.js. Great, so, so far so good. Now to create one of these customers, we'll basically make an instance of our schema. So where do you want to do this? Let's go ahead and just go down here to where we have our API endpoints. And we'll just use this home page as an example. Let's just create a customer and send it to the user when they access that that uh, endpoint. So we'll say const customer is a new customer with a capital C here. So note the difference. This is a, a capital and then the actual constant or the variable that we create is a lowercase c. New customer and now we provide values for those different properties. So inside of the curly braces we'll say name Caleb and let's go with industry is marketing industry whatever that is. Now we can send this back to the user as an example object. So we'll just pass customer here. Save everything and make sure the server is running and PM run start. All right, we're getting an error. Can I find module 
models slash customers. And that's just because I made it plural when it should be singular, so customer. However, there's one more thing I did not consider at the beginning of this video, and that is where I placed the models directory. Currently, these folders are within the same directory, so if you take a look at our folder structure, we have source and models all within our root directory for our project. So what I would rather do is actually move our models directory into source models. And now this should work because inside of source, we have app.js and the models directory. So we're saying, hey, within the same directory, go into the models folder and then grab the customer file. And we wanna make sure we don't have a space there, so that should do the trick. And you can see it says app listing on port 3005. So that was a pretty dumb mistake on my part, probably should have just put that models directory inside of the source directory to begin with. I think that's probably the better structure just to have all your source inside of a single folder. However, instead of redoing this video, I think that would be a fairly common mistake. So I think it is better for me to show that so you guys can learn from that mistake. Plus, I don't really want to redo the video. So yeah, <laughs> let's get back to it. Let's go ahead and make an API request. Let's go ahead and change the port now to 3005 because that's what we're using. And we'll just get it from the home page and make a get request, hit send. And it sends us that example object back. You can see it has this ID which is automatically added by Mongoose and that's what's going to be put inside of the database once it's saved. In the next video, what we're gonna do is talk about how we can save this object to the database and then read it from the database to display it to the user. To give you a little sneak peek of this, where we define that object, we have the ability to say customer.save. And when we execute this code, this is going to be saved to the database. What that means is if we go back to MongoDB and click browse collections, you're going to see this new test collection. And it just broke, but you get the idea. So let's browse collections and we have this test collection with that data. But in the next video, we're gonna talk about how we can change this from test to whatever we want it to be, and how we can read this data from the database and display it as a response to the API request. Instead of just getting the JavaScript data that we hard-coded, I wanna actually retrieve it from the database and display it here. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm really excited. It's where things are finally starting to come together. We're working with the database, we're reading data, saving data, and we're building an interactive application. A lot of these things might seem like, oh, like let's get to the point, but it's very important to learn these different Lego pieces so you can start piecing them together and building more complex applications. So don't get bored, stick with it. You're almost there. You just got like a billion more videos to go. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.